When figuring out how to size your HVAC ductwork, the system itself, there's a little more to it. We're starting to find that out as we go through some of these videos. When we first started down this journey and I met JC, who's going to join us in this video as well, we started to have some conversations about this stuff. Some things that we have noticed a lot of heating and air guys are burdened with when they have to size this stuff correctly. There are right and wrong ways of doing things. And so we've done other videos on the ductwork itself, and we're going to do more videos to come. One of the manuals that ACA puts out, Manual S, it's all about selecting the equipment for the home. And I think a lot of heating and air guys, I'll admit that I used to fall under this banner of just looking at the different tonnages and just selecting what made the most sense based on the load calculation and just kind of moving forward. But as we've moved more into this era of tighter homes and more efficient systems, there's a little more to it than that. And we're gonna do more videos to come that dive more deeper into what we're about to cover. But in this video, we're gonna cover looking at the expanded cooling data on a heating and air system, Obviously, the brand and the model that you select for that home plays a big role, but I want to start somewhere. We're going to start in this video by looking at some of that data, what you need to do with it, what is sensible and latent heat, and we're going to build on that. So we're going to take what we cover in this video and go from there. We're going to use the manual J calculation, the expanded cooling data that we're going to cover in this video. And we're getting kind of in the weeds here, but we're going to break it down into bite size videos. So that way you can follow along. So if you see this video, we're going to do more with what we're about to cover. Thank you again to JC. Well, let's get to it. If you're a pro installing a heating and air system, what size do I need? What speed do I need to run at? Every area is different. So you need to figure out in your area when you get a manual J load calculation done, what you need to do with that information. In my area, most systems are installed in conditions with a 95 degree outside and a 75 degree inside. In JC's area, it's more of, uh, I think he said 98 and 75. So we'll just say 100 degrees outside. So all that matters because you are not just making the air cooler, but you're also removing moisture from the air because that's important as well. We, we don't want to oversize the system to where it's not being able to remove moisture from the space. So if you look on this expanded cooling data sheet, we've got model numbers at the top. You've got to find your right model number and we've got those temperatures running across the top and side for each of those conditions. So in my area, I would look at 95 outside, 75 degree inside, and I'm looking at, you know, the expanded cooling down. I'm looking at the Delta T, I'm looking at the kilowatts and so on. So JC, what are we going to do with all this information? Well, basically you're going to go through this and you're going to figure out, you know, how many sensible BTUs that you have. So like in your area, you're going to take that 38.6 and multiply it by 0.77 and that's going to get you to your sensible BTUs and then you're going to subtract whatever's left over from your total and that's also going to give you your latent and if you in some cases you're going to see that there's not much latent or there's a ton of latent and then you're going to use this additional calculation that we're going to show you in the next video that um, shows you how to interpolate this information into actually sizing the air conditioner. So in this example, so we, we've got 95 degrees outside, 75 degrees inside. We've selected 1340 as our airflow, right? Okay. And can you, can you just speak real quick on why we're selecting that one in Virginia versus one of these others, depending on what part of the country you're in? Well, mainly it has to do with the amount of humidity. If you look, you can say this is the bottom number, the 1575 is a dry climate, and then a middle wet climate is 1340, and then a wet climate is 1225. So would you say someone in Florida is probably living more in the 1225 category? Yes, with this particular heat pump. Got it. And then you said we're going to take the 38.6, multiply that by 0.77. And the answer is your sensible BTUs. 
are sensible BTUs. And so right. I haven't done that math yet, but whatever that math comes out to be, it's going to be less than 38.6, right? You're saying that the sensible BTUs of this system is significantly less than 42,000. Yes. Which is what a lot of guys think when they see that model number. Right. They're going to look at that and say, that's a three and a half ton air conditioner. Yes, it's a three and a half ton air conditioner. But in the conditions that in your area, this air conditioner really only does 38,600 BTUs of cooling. And then 77% um, of that is the sensible and, and whatever's left over is the latent. And just real quick, just to wrap up this video, because we are, we're going to take this information we're going to use an example in a future video of an actual manual J load calculation that that JC has. And we're going to use this information to figure out which exact system we need to be using. But just real quick, JC, just explain, you know, what is sensible and latent and why some folks. Well, I would argue some folks care more than others. Right. Depending on what part of the country you're in. So if you could just speak real quick on what those two numbers are and why someone should care? Well, the easiest way to put it is the sensible BTU is the BTUs or the heat energy that you feel and the latent is all the BTUs that you don't feel. Like if you're sitting next to a person and you guys are both at the same temperature, you don't feel that they're hotter than you or less than you. You know, it's the additional BTUs in your house coming from the windows through radiation or heat energy that's contained in places where the sun is shining. The BTUs you don't really feel. Good enough. So I'll put a link to the description of this video on this exact cooling data sheet. Obviously, what equipment, what brand, all that plays a role, but you'll be able to pull it up yourself and know exactly what we're talking about, what to look for when you are sizing your next heating and air system and be able to have something to build on for years to come. If you learn these concepts that JC is covering, you're gonna probably be better than what? I'd say 80% of the guys that do what we do, JC, you think that's too much of an exaggeration? If you understand this chart, you're in the top 1% of heat and air guys. I love it, I love it. Any final thoughts for this video? I can't wait to make the next one. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm asking JC to break this up. So if you see this video, make sure you watch more to come because we're going to use this data to, uh, actually apply it in the real world and you'll be able to see it. So, um, I'm excited for that as well. So hopefully that made sense. I know we're kind of, again, we're getting into what I call the weeds now. And again, we're going to do more videos to come on what to do with the information that JC just covered. Most heating and air brands are going to be able to provide this data in some way. You may have to go to their website or contact them directly, but most of them, you should be able to get your hands on something similar to what we just covered. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about them. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about the sizing of the supply vents, manual T, the throw of the air, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.